super excited. I want to welcome everyone to our June series on sales, and we're going to kick this off. Um, Diane's going to be talking today about Facebook fundamentals, so we're really super excited to have her. Diane, welcome. Well, we're thank you. We're happy to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, first, before we get started, I just wanted to do just a brief intro of SCORE who we are, what we're all about, if you don't know who we are. And Diane is driving the train today. So what is SCORE? We are a nationwide nonprofit organization. We have over 10,000 volunteers and 300 chapters nationwide. So if you do not know about us, you should really find out more about us. Um, our chapter is the Minnesota chapter, and we are amazing and wonderful. We have great volunteers that are here to help you. In no matter what phase of business you are in, whether you're starting a business, whether you're looking at opening your business or growing your business or even exiting your business, we have experts here that can help you in every phase of your business through our mentoring program. So be sure to jump onto our website at minnesotascore.org and you will be able to find out how to get a mentor Diane, I love that you put this slide together. It's so awesome. And I do, I want to welcome Diane too. I will be stepping down as the chair of the education committee at the end of this month. And Diane has graciously volunteered to take over that role. So I really appreciate you doing that, Diane. I know you're going to do an awesome job. I enjoy working. And I'll, I'll still be here. You know, I'm in, I'll be in the background though. You know, more of a, the behind the scenes kind of person. So um, and then also we definitely want to thank our, volu our volunteers as well as our sponsors. Without our sponsors, obviously, we couldn't be here doing this great work and providing you with workshops and seminars and mentoring. So definitely big, huge thanks to our community sponsors here. And without further ado, Diane, I'm going to turn this over to you. Look forward to hearing and learning more about this with you. Thanks, Paula. I just want to get a little bit of background of uh, who I am. For the last 30 years or so, I've been helping ad adults learn about the computer and more importantly, about the software that they use in uh, developing their workflow and uh, identifying what needs to be done. For the last 20 years, I started developing websites because they were becoming more and more important, of course, and for the last 10 years, I have been a social media marketing professional, helping businesses identify what social media outlet they should be using and the sort of uh, topics that they should be posting. Today, we're going to, to hone in on Facebook fundamentals, get noticed and drive traffic. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is, so why are you on Facebook? What are some of your goals? And of course, uh, brand awareness. You want people to be aware of your business so that when time comes that they need to use a business in your area, it would be your business that they would be contacting. You want to increase your website traffic because your website, of course, is where you tell your complete story. You want to build com community, increase sales and revenue. Isn't that what it's all about? Improve your PR, get uh, promoting your events and getting additional leads to grow your business. Where does Facebook fit into your overall plan? Well, for most businesses, your website is the hub to which everything else should direct, be directed. Facebook then is just one component, one spoke in this hub going to your website. So before you even think about improving your Facebook presence, one of the most important things is, what does your website look like? Is it ready for the traffic? Does it tell your complete story? What you're going to do on Facebook or any of your social media outlets is tell a, a snippet, just a, an episode in your story. You want to drive the traffic to your website so they can see a complete list of all of your products or services. Uh, so it's important that you focus on your website. So many of the clients, when they ask me about their Facebook presence, I say, well, let's start with your website. And they say, well, I don't really want to talk to you about my website. I want to talk to you about Facebook. But if your website isn't prepared, isn't ready, then all the traffic you drive to it is going to be meaningless. So focus on your website first, then look at your social media, 
and definitely look at Facebook if in fact your target audience, and you should be able to identify your target audience pretty quickly. If your target audience is on Facebook, then absolutely that's where you should be. So let's just talk a little bit about what a user sees when they log on to Facebook. Some of you may not be overly familiar with Facebook in general. So I, I always like to start at the beginning. I think it's very important that we, we uh, make sure that everybody is talking about the same phrases and we know what we're talking about. So this is a, a typical uh, view of what a user would see when they logged into their Facebook page. And the primary, primary uh, area of this is their news feed. And of course the news feed is all the news that is being presented to them by Facebook. Of course, not all the news that they could possibly see, and we'll talk about why that's uh, the case, but all the news that Facebook allows them to see. The other part of this is that there are profile pictures. You can see that each of the items has a profile picture. A profile picture for a business is particularly important, it's less so for individuals. A lot of people have a picture of their dog as their profile picture, and that works for them. That's fine. But as a business, you really need to uh, take a, a better look at that. There are also on people's news feeds, sponsored posts. And these are boosted posts. These are posts that an organization, a business has paid to get in front of a particular group of users. We're gonna be talking about uh, the mechanics of this a little bit later, but I just wanted to introduce you to the concept. So the first thing that you should be focusing on when you are developing your Facebook is a great cover picture. We're gonna go through a couple of cover pictures here so that you can see what makes up a great cover picture and what is something that might be improved on. We'll be looking both at the cover picture and the profile picture. Remember the cover picture is the large square, the profile picture is the smaller circle in the lower left corner. And this is actually a good example of a good use of the profile picture in the lower left corner and the cover picture. The only constructive criticism that I would have for this is that I would like to see on this, because think of this uh, cover picture as your business card. Would you ever have a business card that didn't have some kind of contact information on it that this Bishop construction, look at the pretty kitchen that they put together, love it. Uh, I wonder, are they in Minnesota? Are they in Arizona? Or are they in Florida? Well, they happen to be here in Florida, but I would not know that from their cover picture. So I would like to see on here something that, that indicates servicing Sarasota County, Florida, uh, whatever the, the area is, I'd like to see that. Next one that we'll look at is uh, a company, also a local company, and look at their profile picture. Now, this is the picture that's going to appear on every one of their uh, updates, their posts. And what does it tell me about the company? Pretty much nothing. It tells me that uh, I guess there's a, an attractive man who's in charge of the company, but is that what I want to appear on every single post? Wouldn't it be more effective if they used this logo, this compass logo there, then that would reinforce the name of the company and it would be a graphic element. We love graphic elements uh, because they're so, in this case, particularly, it's so colorful. So I would always think about uh, the compass property management when I saw that if I see a picture of this person, I'm less inclined to think about the name of the company. And that's Remember the branding. That's one of the things that we're trying to do with Facebook is to reinforce our branding. And if, if we're not doing it through the profile picture, then that's a lost opportunity. Again, look at this uh, profile picture. It's very attractive, but where is this company? What is their service area? Uh, their rental directions for annual and seasonal living, great. Is that, in, again, in Arizona, California, Texas? Uh, so let's put uh, some more basic information on that. The next one is, uh, I think the funniest of them, that look at their profile picture. It isn't even a picture of a person, it's a picture of one and 
half of two other people with their heads cut off. If I were to see that on a post, what would that tell me? Mm, I don't, I have no idea that they, they only use half the people available to them. I don't know. Wouldn't that be more effective, do you think, if they took this GF logo and dropped it in there. And in fact, this picture of the three people, that would probably make a great cover picture with some text on it. Again, they miss an opportunity to tell me where they're located, what their service area is. These are actual um, cover pictures that I uh, used for a presentation recently to these people. So hopefully if I were to revisit this, they would have changed some of these. The next one is an uh, auto repair. Now, in this particular case, I kind of like the idea that they used the picture of these two people. They're in their uniform, so it conveys that. It also shows that we have a couple of generations here. And so they've got vast experience and new technology. So that, that's kind of nice. But, and oh, and I like the idea that they have a picture of their building. I might have to visit them someday. I hope not, but I might have to visit them and I would know what to look for as I was driving down the road. But driving down the road where? Again, a little address would be helpful here, wouldn't it? Let me know that you're in Sarasota, Venice, uh, Bradenton, not totally sure. I guess I could go to their website. I could email them. I could call them and find out that information. But I shouldn't have to work that hard to find out about this business. This next one, uh, the uh, the owner of the company was a little embarrassed when I, I said, now shame on you because this is your business. You're in graphic design and somebody just threw up a picture that is the wrong aspect ratio, the wrong dimensions for this. If you don't know what the dimensions are for the, the cover picture, just go to the Google engine and put in Facebook cover picture dimensions, and it will tell you exactly the number of pixels that you are aiming for, and you should be able to size a picture accordingly. And even their profile picture is a little bit of a throwaway. It does say print center, I can see that, but because of the direction of this picture, it's a little hard for me to, to make out Venice. Uh, but uh, in any event, again, this would be, is that Venice, Florida? Is that Venice, Italy? Uh, a little further description on that would be helpful. And this is the last one we're going to talk about. What a beautiful picture this is. It's so tranquil. I feel so relaxed when I look at it. But uh, what kind of a business is it? Uh, oh, I see it's a salon. Um, is that a massage parlor? Is that a hair salon? What kind of a salon is that? And where is it? Remember the idea of a business card. Think about your cover picture as a business card and does it convey what you want it to? So I want you all to say that at the end of this uh, seminar, you will go look at your, your profile picture and your uh, cover picture and you'll see whether or not it is saying what you want it to say. Now, another thing that you're going to have on your page is a call to action. You're encouraged to add one of these as a call to action. And a call to action is simply what you want someone to do. You're calling them to, to do an action of some type. And you can see from this drop down menu, the options that you have available to you. Shop now, book now, call now. Now is a real good word when it's a call to action, isn't it? Because the more you, uh, create a movement, the more likely somebody actually is to do it. So you want to use now. Now is a good one. Contact us, send a message. And so you can see that you have an opportunity to choose any of these. When you choose any of them, you then will have an opportunity, for instance, contact us. You'll have an opportunity to identify your email address. Call now will be an opportunity to put in your telephone number. And if somebody is on a mobile device, they'll be able to tap that and in comes a phone call. I was with a client recently and I, of course, looked at their Facebook presence and I said, oh, it says uh, send message as your call to action on your Facebook page. Uh, and that surprised me because I knew she was not very good 
at uh, responding to email. So I said, is that really what you want them to do is to send you an email? She said, no, I really want them to call me. Okay, well, maybe you'll want to change that call to action to call now. And people will then be encouraged to call and access uh, and get to you, right? That's the whole idea of that. So uh, when you're posting, so now we've got your structure all set, you've got your uh, profile picture and your cover picture, and now it's time for you to post some messages. So how should you post? What should a post look like? Well, a post should be made up of four things. And the primary one is a picture, a photograph. Uh, of anything. This is a very enticing photograph, isn't it? I might be inclined to click on uh, their Oreo or click on their link to find out about these particular products that they're selling because that picture is so delicious, isn't it? So a picture is very important. If you post things without a photo of some kind, and it can just be a clip art, but if you post without a photo of some kind, the chances are great that that uh, post is not going to be read by anyone because they're just going to slide on by. They saw a little verbiage. It, the verbiage didn't catch their attention. The picture is going to attack, uh, to attract their attention. So it needs to be a good photo. And then you write your message. And your message should be fairly short. People, again, are not going to write read paragraphs of information generally, unless the first paragraph is so compelling that they would click on the more button to see further. But your message should be short. What, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to contact you? Again, not, uh, not that shouldn't be your entire message is your call to action. But why is it that they should contact you? What makes you different? And hopefully, if, if uh, I met you in the elevator and I said, so tell me about your, your uh, business and we've got a few, a few um, levels to go, uh, you should be able to identify a, what your business is and what makes your business distinctly different from other people. And so your message is also reinforcing what makes your business different. Your message should include a call to action. As you can see in this example, try our recipe for yourself. That's their call to action. And then there's a link. Most of your, your uh, messages should include a link. And what is it a link to? We're going to talk about some of the things that we could post in a moment, but it should be an appropriate link. Often it goes to your website, but it could also go to some other items. So uh, when I, I suggest that you post, you know, some of you blanch at the idea of, oh, what am I going to write? Well, here's some ideas about what you could write about. Offers, are you having a free offer? Is it Father's Day coming up? And is it appropriate that you offer some kind of a discount for Father's Day? Well, that would be a great thing to, to put in. Some pictures, if it's appropriate, before and after pictures, you know that that, um, construction company that, that I showed you the cover of a moment ago. One of the things I suggested that they do, I looked through all of their posts and, you know, their posts were great, but they were all of actor. And I could look at those pictures in any magazine. I'd like to see what the before looked like. So what did this construction company bring to the table? Oh, what was their creativity? So pictures are great. And if you have construction, if you're a, a hairdresser, if you repair cars, uh, take a picture before, take a picture after, and let's compare and let's see the kind of work that you do. You can put on events. If you're having an event, then you would publicize it on Facebook. Co-branding. One of my clients is a, uh, an event that happens every year and we have sponsors. So often I will post on uh, the event page, something that the sponsors have posted on their page. So we co-brand and then the sponsors will post information that I post on our event page. So co-branding is really brilliant because you have an opportunity then to get your message out to a broader area, no cost to you. 
you can put in surveys or polls, and these are really very effective. You know, you can have three or four pictures of something in your business. Maybe one of my clients is a bracelet business, and I might post A, B, C, and D. I might post four different models of their bracelets, and I would say, why don't you vote for which is your favorite model? This gets people engaged and we want engagement. And I'll tell you why that's particularly important in a little while, but we want engagement. Links to related articles, not necessarily articles that you wrote, but did you see an article that you thought that your audience would, uh, would um, be interested in? So again, maybe you're a hairdresser, and is there something new in the hairdresser uh, area? Or have you uh, put in a new line of product and there's an article about that product? You can post to that. Now, it's not going to your website, unless it happened to be posted on your website, but you're getting engagement. And you're also adding value. People will want to follow your business because not only are you all the time touting your business, oh, how good I am, oh, how great I am, but you're also adding value by telling me about other things that I should know about relative to your, your business. You could create some blog posts. If you're not a talented writer, well, what about your sister-in-law who loves writing or you might think about hiring someone. Just try to avoid. Everybody wants to hire the, the high school kid who, you know, got an A in his last English test, but they may not really have the depth of knowledge that you'd like to have. So it, you could uh, have someone write some blog posts relative to things about your industry, product reviews, videos. Videos are very effective. Facebook rewards you for putting in videos. Uh, videos that people watch, uh, not uh, just a few minutes or a few seconds of, but watch in their entirety. They will reward you for that, not so much financially because Facebook doesn't give, they take. But uh, if people are watching an entire video, and that can be up to three minutes, they encourage you to have videos that are that long, uh, they will uh, reward you. Stories that are appropriate, maybe it's client stories infographics, and even a new cover picture. Every time you change your cover picture, that goes out as a post and people will be attracted to it. So you probably know that under each post, there are three options, like, comment, and share. Of these three, uh, they're actually all very important, and we like to encourage people to use all three of them. But the like button, of course, is uh, what was traditionally just a like, just a thumbs up. And then people said, well, I, I don't always have a thumbs up feeling about this. Could, could I have some other options? And they came up with the other options that you can see in the lower left corner of the screen. They came up with the thumbs up, the classic like, uh, but then they added love and haha -ha and wow and sad and even angry. People were, were happy to have an angry finally that they could register their protest. It's interesting to know that we started with just the like, just the thumbs up, and it's now morphed into these other emotions. And Facebook has actually downgraded the value of the thumb, of the thumbs up. So that, yeah, that's a, an engagement, but the other five are even more important and carry more weight. So if you can encourage people to use the other five as opposed to just the thumbs up, that's great. People can also comment on your message. And it's, it, it's important that you encourage commenting. So you say, as a call to action, leave your comments about this below. And they will often comment about it, how they feel about it. That's very important because, again, Facebook will reward you for that. And then lastly, we have the share button. Oh, this is the golden button. It's hard to get people to do it. But if you can get people to share your, your post, that is terrific because not only does the post is the post exposed to the people who already like your business, but 
that then goes to all of the friends of the person that shared it, potentially. Of course, Facebook plays great games with who actually sees everything, but it has the potential of being seen by a much greater audience. So we encourage people to share it. And that would be a call to action too, right? You could say, share this post so that your friends can benefit from this. So if you have a, a, an offer, as we said before, you might add to that, share this post so that your friends get the same 10% discount on their order. And some people hopefully will in fact share. You can see on this particular post, there was one share. Somebody shared this to, uh, to their uh, friends and uh, hopefully it got a greater um, um, distribution as a result of that. Okay. Um, when you are, uh, ways to promote your updates are sharing, as we just talked about, encouraging friends to share. Tagging. When you tag, you put a person's name or business in the post, and that then tags the post, and it then uh, identifies that as kind of a co-branding. Or you could boost your post. And again, we're going to talk about boosting. This is the first uh, item that we're going to talk about where money is involved, where if you boost, it's going to cost you something. But what boosting does is get to a wider audience. So it might be worth your while to think about boosting. The Facebook algor uh, algorithm. I knew I was going to have trouble with that. Algorithm will reward you for posting content that people are engaged in. It isn't enough to just post. I had a client who posted one week 63 times. Now, that's a pretty overwhelming number, isn't it? But the problem was that she posted so often that nobody liked or engaged in any way in the majority of them. So as a result of those 63, maybe four or five were actually seen by people. The rest, Facebook said, too much, not enough engagement, get out of here. And they were not uh, seen by her, uh, her target audience. So don't be an overachiever when it comes to posting. We'll, we'll talk about what an ideal number is in just a moment. So, it's hard to believe, but Facebook was introduced in 2004. It seems like it's been a part of our lives for a lot longer than that, doesn't it? But if we fast forward, we, they developed a, an algorithm starting in 2009 because there, was, there were so many messages that were coming in that they needed to come up with some measuring system to identify uh, who sees what messages. And this funnel has now become quite, uh, quite uh, refined over the years. So in 2015, Facebook became concerned about user experience and they started to down, down rank the pages that posted a high volume of overly promotional contact, content. So in other words, if, if it seemed too too much smacking of selling things, then that was downgraded. Also in 2015, Facebook gave users the ability to choose see first. So for their friends, they were able to go in and say, I wanna see these first. And so as a result, uh, all of their important friends were able to be high on the list. In 2016, they added, uh, Facebook added time spent to the ranking signal. So in other words, they started measuring the post value based upon the amount of time users spent looking at it. Even if they didn't like it or share it, they took into consideration how long they looked at it. And live video was also introduced in 2016, and that was prioritized. So it earns a 3x or three times the watch time than regular videos. In 2017, this was the year that Facebook started prioritizing emotional reactions. So in 2017, the weight reaction of hearts or angry were higher than the more classic likes, as we mentioned before. 
another ranking was added to videos, and that is the completion rank. Videos that kept people watching to the end are shown to more people. So you need to create, if you're going to put in videos, they need to be engaging enough so that people will actually watch to the end. In 2018, Facebook's algorithm now prioritizes posts that spark conversation and meaningful interaction. In other words, comments, but meaningful. And as a result, that changed the way uh, messages were prioritized. In 2019, they included uh, prioritizing high quality original video that kept vi viewers watching longer than a minute and up to three minutes. And in 2020, they announced that it was helping users. I don't know if Facebook ever really helps users, but that's what they said, help users understand the algorithm, which is very hard to understand, but that they would be able to take control a little bit of what they see um, on their screen. It, it has, uh, I don't think it's worked, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, so uh, how do they rank things? Well, uh, it's ranked by the relationship, who a typical user interacts with. So it's not just seeing a, a post swipe by your newsfeed, it's an interaction. So if a, a user interacts or likes or loves or haha -ha, um, for one of your posts, then they score higher in who's go that they will see your posts. Also the content type, has this individual reacted well to a, a video link or an image? And if so, if there's a post that contains that, there's a greater likelihood that they will see that post. Popularity, how many likes, engagements the post gets? We've talked about that. And lastly, the recency of it. How new is this? If it's an older post, it's going to fall down a little bit lower. So tips for working with the algorithm. Let's see how we can uh, encourage the use of the algorithm to our benefit. Reply to your audience. If you have somebody that comments on your Facebook post, reply to them, encourage that. Then more people will be uh, putting uh, comments on your post if you reply to them. Get your audience replying to each other. This is a little bit harder, but I think if you stimulate the conversation, you'll see that you can get that going. Aim for love more than likes. <laughs> that could be said a lot uh, relative to uh, a lot of things in life, right? Uh, post when your audience is online. Now, this may seem like a, a pretty obvious thing, but uh, you, you know, you're busy all day. You've got time at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night to post to your Facebook page. That's good for you. So it must be good for everybody. But it turns out, you know what? It's not really that good to post it at nine or 10 o'clock because your target audience may be early birds. And by the time it rolls around tomorrow morning, your posts may be preceded by newer, better posts and your posts may not be going anywhere. So find out when your posts are online and see if you can work with that. The, there's something that was introduced a little bit ago, a year or so ago, and it's called Facebook Stories. Now, stories are very confusing, but they're little snippets. It's a little uh, picture and some text on it, and that only hangs around for one day, but it's at the very top of a Facebook experience. So uh, there's uh, a greater uh, opportunity for people to read uh, the Facebook stories. So consider putting in Facebook stories, make a video that people wanna watch. We mentioned this up to three minutes, people will watch a video if it's entertaining enough. And I don't mean entertaining as in, you know, comic style, but entertaining as in informative. And lastly, and this is kind of a secret, is to use groups. Groups are very important. Um, 
you can have a group uh, for any reason. Um, when I post uh, items for SCORE, I have joined a number of groups that are business related, Sarasota and Manatee specific, and I share information onto those groups, whether it's a women's group, it's a targeted group, black owners, business owners, um, Sarasota new business owners. I, I try and find groups that are that would benefit from having a SCORE mentor and post information on there. If there, are, if there isn't a group that uh, interests you or that you think um, might be helpful to your business, then start that group. It's very easy to start a group on Facebook. If you wanted to create your own group, uh, then you simply just um, um, go to your Facebook, uh, create a new group, name the group, and then you start uh, inviting people to it. You enables you to communicate with people who need or want your services now or in the future or know people that they could recommend. Oh yes, I saw that service that, uh, you know, that car detailing. I saw that you were interested in a car detailing. I saw um, on my Facebook feed, a car detailing company. If they have questions about using your service or product, this would be a good place for you to have a Q&A on that. And they have an opportunity to see your company and want to stay or know uh, about your developments. So uh, we mentioned earlier about boosting a post. So we're going to talk a little bit about that now. I only boost maybe once a month, twice a month at most. It's just, I, th I think about a boost as being a way to, in fact, boost the number of people that I can reach at a particular time. So uh, when I boost, uh, that allows me to take it outside my normal group and expand it to a greater group that I have an opportunity to identify. So when you click on a uh, boost post, it brings you to another window and you have an opportunity to boost a post to a particular audience. People who like your page, people who like your page and their friends. Um, people who like your page is probably not something I would ever do, uh, but um, because they might already be getting my post, but the one, their page and their friends, you might think that the people who like your page have similar friends with similar interest, and maybe that would be a good group to reach, or people you use, you choose through targeting. And this is the one that I like most because I get to say who exactly that audience is. So I can either edit an existing audience or I can create a new audience. So let's say that we were going to create a new audience. You have an opportunity to name that audience so that uh, you can have a number of targeted groups that you want to boost to. This particular post you want to boost to uh, men who might be interested in your product, but maybe another boost would be to the women who might be interested in your product. So you can create as many audiences as possible or as, as you need. Um, lo location, how important is the location? Is yours a national company or is it very much in a particular geographic area? So in place of United States, you would have an opportunity to uh, turn that off. You could type in Florida or you could type in Sarasota. You could type in a whole series of cities and towns and be very targeted to that. The age, what is the age of your target audience? And again, remember how we talked about your target audience. You need to know who that target audience is. It's going to come up frequently. And so this is something you need to be able to choose easily. This uh, particular audience that I've chosen here is for the bracelet business. We know that our customers are primarily women, 40 to 65 and above, and their interests in bracelets, shopping and fashion, jewelry, silver, fashion accessories, online shopping, and the like. As you're putting in your, your interest, the interest that you feel they have, uh, Facebook is also offering some suggestions for you. Uh, I didn't uh, include the body piercing. I don't, our jewelry is not uh, 
uh, for body piercing. So I didn't think that that was appropriate, but in any event, Facebook is trying to help you with this. And then of course you click on save to save your audience. And once you have your audience identified, then you choose how much your budget is. And you can see in this particular place, I've chosen $10 and $10, I don't know, $10 a month seems like, yeah, that's worth it, $20 a month, sure. Uh, if I boost two, two posts, I might do that. Facebook will tell me at $10 for the duration that I've chosen, I should be able to reach somewhere between 430 and 1,000 people. Now, I know that that's a big range. Uh, they're all actually saying my target audience is 20 million people, uh, and so I'm only reaching a small subset of that. But uh, if I raise the price or the duration, it would expand this. Does it really reach these people? Facebook says it does, and we have to, we have to agree that they must know what they're doing. Uh, and they will report back to you how many people they've actually reached. You want to make sure that your post is set to public so that you can boost it. And then we, we can share to our group. Um, when we talk about sharing to a group, when you click on share to group, it will give you an opportunity to choose the group. You can see that this is my business um, Facebook page. And so these are two groups that I joined as my business. And so when I post a score promotion or I post any promotion, I then can share it to these groups and it expands the number of people who are seeing my post. Uh, so I just wanted to show you, this is an event that I do the social media for. It's a yearly event. And uh, as a result of just sharing this, I did not boost this, just sharing this to nine groups, this number of people reached, which normally for a regular post is somewhere between uh, 400 and seven or 800. Just by sharing it to groups, I was able to reach almost 3,000 people. Actually, the ultimate number was considerably higher than this because it continued to be shared by other people. Uh, and I had a nice number of engagements on it. So this was a particularly good, um, not boosting, but result of sharing to groups. And you can see that there were, well, there were 10 shares at this point. Uh, and the shares overwhelmed the number of likes three people who don't really know that we don't want them to just click the like button. We want them to click on more than that. Um, but that three people liked it, but there were 10 shares and there were 61 engagements. So these are good numbers uh, for a, uh, a sharing event. Okay, this is uh, a screenshot. Uh, I wrote a book, 100 Amazing Computer Tips, a few years ago in 2014. Uh, it's still available today on Amazon.com. Uh, but when I first developed my book, when I first wrote the book and had it come out, my, um, my um, number of people that I had who were following my business page was very low. I hadn't really uh, fostered that. So as a result, I decided to uh, boost these posts and I thought it was worth doing. And it really, as you can see, uh, my regular posts were in the whoa, wicked double digits because I didn't have that many people who were following my um, my Facebook page. But when I boosted it, you can see, and most of these, as I say, were $10 or $20. And it went from double digits to over 400, uh, over 4,000 views of this. And of course, that resulted in books being sold, which was the goal, wasn't it? So uh, what I've been talking about seems like a lot of information. And most importantly, a lot of time-consuming stuff, doesn't it? You're probably sitting back thinking, how am I ever going to do all of this? I have a business to run, and this Facebook is not my business. Well, there are, of course, 
um, organizations that want to help you. There are tools available to you, some paid, some free. Of course, the paid are the better ones. You might want to start with some of the free ones. And what they will encourage you to do, and this is really a good idea, is to lay out a plan, maybe a monthly plan or a two-month plan. What are your goals for the next month or the next two months? And how will you achieve those goals? You're going to be posting to Facebook. Great, that's a good start. What sort of things will you be posting? How frequently will you be posting? You only wanna post between four and five times a week, four and five times a week. More than that is overkill. More than that, and you'll be penalized by Facebook. And so it's you're, you're working too hard for nothing. So consider looking into some of these. Hootsuite is very popular. Some of the graphics that I used in my presentation came from Hootsuite. They have a lot of good information. Even if you don't use Hootsuite, go to their website. They've got lots of videos and lots of helpful tools to uh, encourage you to use Facebook in a proper way. Sprout Social is also another good one, but as you can see, there's quite a variety of tools that are there to help you. So some of the takeaways that I'd like for you to have is that you should define your goals. I think I've said that more than once. You really need to define your goals. Post four to five times a week. That's enough. Uh, less than that, okay, but uh, you know, I, uh, one client that I saw when I went to his Facebook page, I counted and he hadn't posted since October, and this was in February. Um, that's not enough. Uh, it, your, your crowd will forget about you by then, and Facebook will penalize you that when you all of a sudden wake up and start posting, they're not going to be sharing that as much because you haven't been posting in the past. You want to look at the the post reactions and see if you're getting the kind of reactions that you want. And maybe you're not getting the reactions you want because you're not giving them the right call to action uh, for their reaction. You want to increase the number of likes for your page. You want to encourage commenting and sharing. Remember, sharing is caring, as my grand say. Uh, you want to post to your groups. This is an important one because if you post to groups, you will then be able to do the last thing, which is boost sparingly. We don't want you spending all of your money or all of your time on boosting. Sometimes it's a good thing to do so that you can expand your audience, but once you get a larger audience, it does feed upon itself. So the more you uh, can expand that and boosting will help you do it. So the last thing I want you to be aware of is feel free to contact me. A lot of people will just email and say, could you just look at my Facebook cover? What do you think about my profile picture? Um, could you look at my website? Now, I'm not going to give you a complete analysis of your website, but I will give you some feedback on my overall impressions of it. My name is Diane McKeever, and here at SCORE, we put a dot between the two, so it's diane.mckeever at scorevolunteer.org, and I will get back to you. I, I love seeing uh, your um, what your work and uh, just giving you um, an opinion. Uh, my opinion is worth as much as anybody else's, but just an overview of it. You might be featured in another presentation on it before and after, you never know. So we're going to get down to our questions. I see that there are two questions. Let me see, the first one is from Rosalind. Does live video rank better than just posting a video that's not live? The answer to that, Rosalind, is absolutely yes. Uh, Facebook encourages live video. Um, I find live video sometimes um, strange in that it just doesn't appear sometimes as if people know that they're on, on a camera. Uh, there was somebody who has had a consignment store and they were just walking around and they're looking, you know, they're not even showing product. Uh, it just seemed very strange. Uh, they must have known that the video had started, but live video absolutely ranks higher than uh, not live video. Oh, 
Jeannie, how do you feel about Facebook asking for your driver's license? Mm, that to me looks like a red flag of sorts because uh, Facebook should not be, and I, I really don't recall Facebook ever asking about, uh, sorry, I don't recall Facebook ever asking me for my driver's license. Uh, of course, I set up my Facebook account a long time ago, but I don't believe that they typically will ask you for that. So if they ask me for it, I would question whether or not it was actually Facebook asking me. You know, if it's an email from Facebook, an email from Facebook uh, asking for your driver's license, that might be just something that you could throw in your, uh, your uh, spam file and... Um, not follow up on. I've not ever seen that. I, I wonder if anybody else has uh, has seen that. Um, okay, uh, is there any other a little chat going on? Oh, they asked you for yours too. Hmm. Ah, what's the best way to reach more of an audience on your kickstart? Um, well, you can post your Kickstart campaign on Facebook, can't you, using a link. Uh, and, and why is it important that you get more feedback for your Kickstart? Be more, in, in, uh, be more uh, imploring of why someone would want to help you with your Kickstart. Is your product so great? Is your service so amazing that people would want to... Um, help you with that. Um, yes, I've done that. Mm. I'm thinking that people are, are saying that they have, um, yep, yeah, I'm thinking that people have said that they have been asked for their driver's license. That's new to me, so I really have no comment about that. Let me see, there's another. Um, I have no idea how that happened, but did not get much co-inversions. Oh, I have a post that went viral. Okay. <laughs> ah, a little editing there. Conversions. Ah, yes, that, that makes more sense. Uh, you know, the universe knows what, why a, um, a post went viral. It, it was engaging to some people and it's hard to know why sometimes that happens. But uh, just say thank you. If this was your business and you benefited from it, then that's great. Uh, I, I think sometimes if you try to make things go viral, it doesn't so much work. Oh, you did not get much conversions. Oh, okay. And why was that? Well, what what did you want your your conversions to be? What was your call to action? Uh, what um, task, what uh, result did you expect from it? Maybe that was not clear. And so therefore you didn't get your conversions. That would be my guess. Oh, we have another one, Tina. What kind of boost, con boost content Facebook will never pass? Oh, uh, they certainly do have their um, rules about the kind of posts. Of course, if your, if your picture is inappropriate, that's not going to happen. There was a time that if your picture had uh, text on it that covered uh, X percentage of the picture, then uh, they would uh, not approve that. But usually when they uh, do not approve your boost, they'll tell you why they're not going to approve it, whether the, it's, the, it's the message or the picture that they don't approve of. And now you have to go back and recraft that and see um, what you can do about that. Okay, I think that's all of the questions that we have here. Uh, Paula isn't back. I know that she had something else that she needed to do. But, oh, I'm here. I'm oh, here, Diane. I can facilitate the questions for you, hon. Okay. I think I answered all of the questions. Oh, wonderful. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. 
So unless there are any more questions, uh, do you recommend Canva to create the post? Sure, that's a great program. Yep, whatever post, whatever um, software works for you, Canva is a great software and uh, it's online. So it's nice that you don't have to download it. You're always working with the newest version of it. Uh, and it's relatively easy to use. So absolutely, yep. And then Diane, were you able to jump into the chat as well to see the questions there? I did. Okay, fantastic. Because there was just one more that posted uh, what kind of boost to content um, Facebook will never pass. Right, I did answer that question. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and then one more question just got posted. Um, I've posted on Facebook and Instagram and shared my link with everyone. Do you think ads would be beneficial? I have not found that ads are any better. Facebook will encourage you to turn a post into an ad. I've done both and I have not seen that one is any better than the other. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, and I've, I've, done, I've got some personal experience with that as well. And um, I'm not sure, unless you're doing some real specific targeting, um, that ads are really super helpful there. Um, I know Jeremy goes over this in some of, some of the uh, sessions that he does on uh, social media marketing. Um, but I really think that, you know, that's something that you should talk with a professional about and, and make sure that whatever you're doing there is super, super targeted. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. And then, um, can you post on somebody's page? Somebody asked this question. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what that's asking there. Well, Jessica, uh, that's a good answer. A good question. Here's the answer. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it really depends the individual. If you're po if you're talking about posting on an individual's uh, uh, newsfeed, um, they have to allow that, and a business can not allow people to post. So. It depends upon the settings that were uh, identified when the um, when the company or the individual uh, newsfeed was set up. So it's a definite maybe. Definite maybe. I like those answers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Well, well you Diane can't come back and say you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We, we try not to be wrong, but, you know, failure is all part of it, right? The it lessons is. we learn, for sure. Well, and Diane, Facebook thank is you. a learning experience, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's that you'll be working with for a long time. It's been here since uh, 2004, remember I mentioned? I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Yeah, certainly a good tool to learn more about. And we really appreciate you doing this session, Diane. Um, and folks, you will get a emailed copy of the presentation and the slides. So you'll be able to go through that on a slower pace if you need to. But um, again, thank you, Diane. And if you have not, if you need help with, you know, starting your business or even have more specific questions about this, certainly get onto the website for SCORE Minnesota and uh, request a mentor. We'll be happy to help you. Absolutely. Looking forward to hearing from some of you. So Maybe you'll be a, a mentee for me, at one, a client at one point. Perfect. Thank you, Diane. Have a great day, hon. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.